thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. So um, basically, I do feel that my uh, today's talk is really great natural uh, expanding of what guys just have shared with you. So um, just a little bit about my background. I'm an agile coach and the Playtica I've spent there almost three years. Uh, and well, why it's important to understand the fact that I'm agile coach, basically because it's like, if you have a hammer, everything around you at the end of the day will look like nails, which means that I've tried to implement the um, inner source practices in Playtica, which is the gaming company. And we have more than 2,000 engineers spread across the world. There is a huge amount of different studios which are creating huge amount of different games and they're uh, living in six different locations, which means that we had great opportunity for implementation of inner source. And also we had faced with a huge amount of uh, different pushbacks uh, and explanations why it cannot be implemented. So, um, but at the end of the day, which is also really important, at least as for me, uh, we've started to understand that we are not only ready to um, say that we basically have implemented inner source practices at the level we are happy with, but we are ready to expand it a bit. And this talk is basically about, first of all, why it's important to expand contribution. Because I assume that that is the very first question you have to ask yourself when you're starting to do anything. Uh, so when we've started to implement uh, inner source practices, we've used the culture change model that's basically getting back to my experience in a, as an agile coach. Yeah, when I'm trying to implement any change, I um, basically always have I found myself in the situation when I do remind myself that there is basically two great models how to implement any change, and that's quarters change model or ADCAR. I do prefer a little bit more quarter change model. Uh, it continue uh, it contains my apologies in the old version seven step in the renewable version eight step just the brief overview of these steps to provide you that feeling and understanding why it's important to use this model and why we need to expand so of course when you're trying to change anything first of all you need to create that sense of urgency for yourself for everyone who will kind of uh, near to you, uh, surrounding, et cetera, et cetera, you really need to address the question, why on earth do we need to change something? Why now? And what's in it for us? That's really crucial to understand it. And as soon as you will have all these answers, even if they will not be that mature at the point of a time, you will start that movement. It's a perfect time to start create that team of evangelists who will be inspired with these ideas exactly as you are and develop together with them vision and strategy what exactly will be implemented how you will try to implement it what is kind of the first initial plans understanding uh steps etc cetera, etc cetera. and as soon as you will have that even draft version share it share it as wide as possible. I, I do remember that time when I found myself basically as the talking head. I just walk and talk. <laughs> I've shared this idea of how amazing uh, inner source implementation of the inner source practices might be, how much value we can gain in within a time, et cetera, et cetera. But just exactly at that pin second of a time when I've started to share these ideas, I've started to face with a huge amount of different pushbacks and of course different amount of obstacles so it's really important to make sure that you and your team of evangelists will act um really hardly as shields bows and as impediments removers you need to make sure that you've done it all uh to keep 
uh, your um, kind of strategy alive, to keep sharing this, to keep addressing, and uh, within these short iterations, add more and more uh, value, add more and more uh, implementation, and removing these uh, pushbacks, obstacles, uh, worries from uh, heads of your teams, from your uh, organization, experience, etc. And of course, it's really important to, as I mentioned just right now, to know using short iteration, to set short time goals, to have possibility, gain this low hanging fruits, uh, get these quick wins, along with have this possibility for the retrospective analysis and to become better and better in time. And the, here, the last two steps, which are basically the answer of the original question, why do we need expand it? Why do we need expand contribution or inner source practices? Because we need to keep momentum and make changes stick. What do I mean here? Let's admit that basically the change cannot look, and it never looks like that wide, bright way from point A to point B, and you're just moving and everything looks beautiful. Nah. Your moment most probably will look like small iteration toward your goal and then huge setback. And then yet again, let's try to do that. Let's maybe find another way and you start that movement again and then get another setback. So at the end of the day, your ultimate goal become make sure that this delta between your movements toward your goal and setbacks will become kind of or will decrease in time. And to keep that happen, you need to set new challenging targets. Uh, you need to start to create that culture that will become sustained, that will uh, become basically the new uh, vision, the new understanding of the problem within whole organization, that new vocabulary even has been built. And that's exactly that point of a time when you need to start to expand your uh, culture, your understanding, your practices, make it um, more interest. Like in game design, you know, when you're trying to provide to gamer yet another challenging task, not way too complex, so he could do that, but still really interesting, still kind of helping to move forward to address new and new questions within exactly the same environment. So how to do that? First of all, uh, of course, it's creating that environment where the basic layer gonna be belonging, support that sense of belonging. It's one of our natural, and when I'm saying our, I mean as a human being, uh, our natural need to belong to something. So build up that understanding that it's kind of cool, great, and nice to belong to this inner source culture, to this inner source family, evangelists, uh, team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That it's amazing to be the owner of the code. That the, it's amazing to become uh, more responsible to uh, basically build up that feeling of ownership along with the sharing that it's amazing to have possibility to uh, discuss with someone uh, exactly <laughs> as much smart as you are some really complex and difficult problems and find some bright new solutions uh, that it's really great and amazing to be a part of community, uh, to share your knowledge and find some great ideas. So basically when you're thinking about creating an environment within which you will be able to expand something or keep your momentum or make the change you are looking for a stick within your organization, sorry, uh, basically that's your way. Build up that sense of belonging, promote, and encourage the culture of ownership 
and of course build and promote communities of practices and it doesn't matter if it's going to be offline online combined online servers or uh, i don't know any hybrid structures yes it might be a little bit more challenging compared to only off-site practices but still there are a huge amount of tools right now uh, on the market thankfully to COVID, both kind of thankfully and thankfully to the COVID. Uh, there is a huge amount of all of it so don't be afraid to um, kind of take a look try to experiment around it uh, try to do that with your community encourage your community experiment uh, even without you as a leader of it uh, build up uh, kind of these uh, centers of community and build up that culture of other leaders so this all will help you to create create the environment within uh, which you will be able to start implementation of this expanding practices, ideas, and rules, which are, first of all, it, and it's just a couple of the ideas, the list of all other ideas are basically endless. It's all about your imagination, I assume. That's it. And which is really great is the fact that it's not about only your imagination. I mean, the only solely soldier in the field. You have, I hope, till this moment of time, this great community built up with your and filled up with your teammates who are inspired with the ideas of uh, inner source culture of the community of practice mm -hmm. as much as you are so what might be of course gamification i'm from gaming studio i'm in love with gamification i do believe that it helps a lot uh to discuss to implement to to help stick the changes uh anything connected to it pages competitions uh i don't know open discord servers uh when you once per week are starting to discuss some interesting technical issues anything with this uh element of challenging tasks and slightly filling off competition for sure will help you a lot to expand your experience of usage of inner source practices patterns etc hackathons i love them and yes of course hackathons are much more interesting when we're talking about offline format but we've lately had just amazing experience with having a fully online hackathon and I'm, I'm just in love with it. I mean, we had built so many great ideas uh, and, and discussed and, and highlighted so many questions uh, that for me it was, I have to admit, a really fresh experience. I haven't expected that it will be that good because i'm basically from the old school i do believe <laughs> and uh offside hack it again try you will find your way just try to do that if not on your own maybe uh someone from your community will be ready to stay there together with you or even do it on uh on their own of course it's about community gatherings it's important to have that calendar basically of the community events if you can share this calendar with all the community uh it, it basically will continue uh, sorry it will basically um contains or, or cover two steps is gamification and building off community what do i mean here uh, if you will try to build up your community, and it's also his way to build up your community as some kind of, you know, slightly private club, where if you want to join it, you have to earn it, it might become really interesting, especially taking into account if community gathering are amazing events. You want to become a part of it. You want to have possibility to take a look what is going on behind that kind of community curtains. And you started to search for the information. So it's, it's starting to turn around the ship, you know. It's not about management trying to explain that, hey, guys, we have this 
beautiful and, and brighty and shiny uh, inner source ideas, maybe you would love to take a look. Uh, uh, uh. It's more about like uh, they're looking for the information and leaders and managers are there to share it. So again, community might be empowered with the gamification practices. So try to do that. Knowledge sharing practices are really important, especially when we are talking about uh, this idea of contribution expansion. All your subject matter experts, all your top and trusted contributors might become the subject matter expert uh, for the uh, knowledge sharing, especially uh, asynchronous one. And of course, transparent backlogs. It's truly important from what I've seen, that's the very last slide of me, uh, of mine, uh, thank you, Max, uh, to make sure that your backlogs are truly transparent and open for contribution. What do I mean? Uh, maybe engineers will have some great ideas uh, they would love to share with you. It not necessarily means that they will, will sit right here and right now and contribute the piece of code. Maybe they would love to just highlight the idea or highlight an issue, even though they don't have right here and right now some technical solution or time to contribute I mean, a code, write, uh, write it down. But it would be amazing to have it in your backlog to discuss it with your team, to discuss it with your community later on. So that's basically it from my side. Uh, thank you so much. And um, yeah, own, encourage, and belong. That is truly important. Uh, if, do not hesitate, ping me if you will feel that you have any further questions, uh, both in LinkedIn or Slack channel. I will stay here for a while to address any questions. Thank you so much. That's it.